welcome to MKTS Morning Talk Show. My name is Jackie Lash, and today Mr. Karn's Track 2, not Track 4, has prepared a show for you packed with segments from world news, sports, to comedy. I'll kick off the show with some of the latest entertainment. On Sunday, MTV held their annual movie awards, and to no surprise, The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, swept the stage and won Best Movie of the Year. Miley Cyrus has had to cancel another concert on her Bangers tour, as she remains in the hospital after suffering a severe allergic reaction to medication she took to treat a sinus infection. Finally, Susicle the Musical made its way to Miami Country Day and performed for three nights, starring our very own Marnie Weiss, Josh Hug, Kanisha Petit Farr, and Sammy Habib. Now, junior Matt Wendro hit the halls to ask Country Day students some interesting questions. Matt, tell us what you learned. Thanks, Jackie. The questions that I asked some of the students were, what do you think about BJ's beard? How tall do you think Mr. Carnage's baby girl is going to be? And what is your favorite thing to do in the library? Regarding to what people think of BJ's beard, senior Henry Clement said, it's majestic. Softball's first baseman and junior Danny Saad said, it is nice, and it gives the softball team good luck. Regarding to how tall Mr. Carnage's baby girl is going to be, she might as well go right into the Guinness Book of World Records. Senior Henry Clement said, out of the womb, six foot three. Senior Danielle Minot said, three feet tall. Lastly, regarding to what students' favorite things to do in the library is, Senior Harry Berger said, I come to the library to check out all the hot girls. And finally, Senior Danielle Minot said, I try to sneak in and eat food. Back to you, Jackie, over and out. Thanks, Matt. Expanding from our MCDS community to the globe, sophomore Josh Hug is coming to you live from Ukraine and ready to update us on some world news. Thanks, Jackie. I'm here in Kiev, and today on the topic of world news, we are covering the ongoing conflicts between Russia and Ukraine. We all know about the mass protests and local conflicts surrounding there, but the root causes are not immediately evident. The troubles began when the Ukrainian president began to make deals with the European Union. Ukrainian citizens hope the deal will go through, as this would open them up to unity with the rest of Europe. Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, then put pressure on the president of Ukraine to deny the deal for Russia's economic benefit. So when the Ukrainian president did deny it, thousands of people flooded to the streets in protest, demanding his resignation and claiming that he has committed treason. This led to violent police resistance and the retreat of the Ukrainian president into Russia. Putin then sent troops to the Russian border and finally went into Crimea, a small Ukrainian state which houses a Russophone population and Russian naval bases. The U.S. in response has given food rations to Ukrainian soldiers, but no military action or support in the way of weapons or direct confrontation is likely on our part. A violent conflict, though, may be imminent and would certainly have a large impact on the world. Thanks for listening. Keep up with the world and stay classy. Back to you, Jackie. Outside the American Airlines arena, Max, a freshman, is a huge Heat fan and has been analyzing the Heat season and road to the playoffs. Max? Good morning, Country Day. The Miami Heat turned out to have a great NBA season. They went 54-28 and and lost their last regular season game to the Philadelphia 76ers. They had many injuries throughout the season. Dwayne Wade was out for nine games and came back for the last two games. Now, the Heat are sitting as the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. They just faced the Charlotte Bobcats in the first round of the NBA playoffs. This series ended up to be 4-0 Heat. Now the Heat are waiting for the Brooklyn and Toronto series to be done. In my opinion, the Miami Heat will face off the Brooklyn Nets in a seven-game series. This series will turn out to be 4-2. If, if this turns out to be, then the Miami Heat will face the Indianapolis Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Miami Heat will go on to beat the Pacers 4-3, Game 7 in Indianapolis. The finals will end up to be Miami Heat versus the LA Clippers. This series will be 4-2 Heat. This, this all will go perfectly fine if Dwayne Wade is healthy. Jackie? Thanks, Max. Moving from basketball to football, junior Jordan Morris is inside NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas, to give us inside scoop on this year's NFL Draft. Thanks, Jackie. Omaha! Omaha! 
Yes, that's right. Draft day is nearly upon us, and it's a wide open race to being the number one pick. You have your Manzels and Clownies, your Bortles and Bridgewaters, and with a system as subjective as the NFL draft, there's no telling what's going to happen. USA Today says a record 88 underclassmen have declared for this year's draft. And believe me, this year's draft class is loaded with talent. You see, this puts the Houston Texans, who have the number one pick, in an odd position. After going 2-14 last year and seeing their starting quarterback throw a pick six in four straight games, which broke the record held by a Peyton Manning and a John Elway, the Texans can go need and get the best player available, which is the monster defensive end out of South Carolina, Jadavion Clowney, or they can go one, which after quarterback, who only really needs to be good enough to not throw a pick six in four straight games. Warren Sapp once said, my dad always told me there's a fine line between a need and a want. I say, get Clowney. Also, I see the Rams getting Sammy Watkins with the second pick, provided there are no shenanigans to uplift their lukewarm offense so it can put some points on the board and win some football games. As for the Jaguars with the third pick, my homeboys at ESPN and I are looking forward to seeing the, lower, the lowly quarterback needy Jaguars select like Johnny Football third overall. If he turns out not to be the answer, I guarantee that he'll sell a lot of tickets. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks, everybody. Well, that's our show. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Signing out.